when I was 13, I used to call Luther at home on Sunday night. He was at home watching Bonanza with Mary and Joni and Jeff, and here's this kid from Alabama, you know, calling in, saying, I want to be a radio announcer, Mr. Massengill. Call me Luther. Okay, Luther, I want to be a radio announcer. And he would tell me, you need to study, you need to read the paper, you need to know more about government and politics. By the way, son, where are you from? I'm from Alabama. Well, you may want to work on that accent a little bit, too. And that sounds like such a sweet story, you know, a 13-year-old kid just calling a radio legend out of the blue looking for advice. But let's face it, I knew I was going to be wanting a job in a few years. And at the time, Luther was very old. He was about 50. <laughs> and I knew he'd be retiring soon and there'd be a job opening for me. And I used to love listening to him one-on-one -on -one just to pick up on his secrets. He didn't if you ever listened to Luther on the radio the first time he hooked you because he didn't talk down to you he didn't talk at you Luther carried on a conversation with you did you ever notice that he was just your old pal on the radio he did a lot of commercials but he'd sneak them past you you didn't even know what was hitting you he'd be playing a song and come out of it and say you know uh, there's rain in the forecast and the other day I was over visiting my pal Harold Coker at Coker Tire Company. He said, Luther, you don't have much tread on those tires. You know, I've got some steel belted radials here that are just what you need. Well, sure enough, Harold and his friendly guys put those truck tires on my truck and I'm not slipping and sliding anymore. Excuse me, I'm gonna have a little sip of Mayfield milk here while I, <laughs> while I uh, munch on my Bojangles biscuit. <laughs> I'd be sitting there at home like, did he, did I just sit there and listen to three commercials? <laughs> How'd he do that? And I'd go to my boss and say, hey, he just, he just did three commercials. How does he get away with that? And my boss would say, well, son, if you ever amount to anything, you might do that too. <laughs> but he sold a lot of tires and milk and biscuits and anything else. And every now and then, I will be on TV and Cindy will say, did I just hear a little Luther in your voice? And I'll fess up and say, you sure did. That is a high compliment and I learned from the best. I was fortunate to spend a lot of time with Luther the last few years, and I learned so much. I miss going places with him. I love to see him work a crowd. Somebody said he could be a great politician. Oh, he would have never lost an election. People loved him. He loved them right back. I don't think he ever got to eat a meal without being interrupted mid-chew, and he, someone would stop and want a hug or a picture, but he never complained. He knew you, the listeners, were responsible for making him a success. And nothing made him happier than somebody coming up saying, Luther, God bless you, you found my dog back in 1969. Or Luther, you made my Christmas by playing that beautiful Christmas classic, Jingle Bells by the Barking Dogs. That makes my year. And, that would just make him light up. We're calling this a celebration of his life and it gives me great comfort and joy knowing that he knew how much you loved him. There was no doubt. He got that love everywhere he went and he cherished it. We always knew where to find him. We knew he was either at home in Glenwood, we knew that he was at his church on Highway 58, taking out the trash, or we knew that he was on South Broad Street on Luther Massengill Parkway. He was so proud of that honor. He was proud of other recent honors like the Radio Hall of Fame here in Tennessee, the National Radio Hall of Fame in Chicago. In Chicago that night, he was kind of weary from all the travel. And I told him only half kiddingly, I said, you know, Luther, all these honors, I think we can get you honored at the White House. True story. He looked at me, gritted his teeth, and said, you'd better not. <laughs> Well, he's moved on now, but we know where he is. We know where to find Luther. Somebody said on the radio yesterday, Chattanooga has lost its voice. Maybe, but you know what? I still hear him, clear as day. That voice, that vocal ray of sunshine is right up here. It's right here. It's not going anywhere. I'll always hear it. I hear him now. He's saying, David, get on with it. So I will. I want to suggest here in front of you today and to everybody listening, and I know there are people here of influence, and we appreciate those of you who are here of influence. I want us to set aside one day each year. A good one would be March 9th, Luther's birthday. 
Luther Day every year. We could use that day to be like Luther. Treat people with kindness. Open the door for a stranger. Let that car merge in your lane that you know, you'd ordinarily go, eh, I'm going to beat you out of this. Buy a lunch for somebody you don't know. Take care of them at the checkout line at the grocery store. Visit a nursing home. March 9th, Luther Day. Make somebody smile. Luther did it every day. Surely we can figure out a way to make that happen one day a year in Chattanooga. I think it would be a great idea. Go along with that? Luther Day. And I want to close with this. As Greg mentioned a while ago, Luther would never brag about this, but I did squeeze it out of him one day. He got job offers from everywhere. New York, Chicago, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, just to name a few. They'd wave some big cash in front of him and say, hey, we want to make you a big star. We want to make you into something bigger than a little old Chattanooga, Tennessee. And he would always say, no thanks. You know, I love Chattanooga. I love living in a town where we can enjoy the four different seasons every year. My family's there. My heart's there. I just don't want to leave Chattanooga. Wow, are we lucky that he had that kind of attitude toward our town. He said, I'm going to stay here. And we all know through all those years, he really only had one more destination in mind. And Monday morning, that offer he'd been waiting for finally came through. And I can just, I can just see his old pals who are not with us today. Uh, Van, Ernie, Big Jim, Harry, Mort, Jimmy, Jolly Charlie, and Buddy Houts. I can just see it. You know they're in a big room up there somewhere. Luther just walked in and they gave him a standing ovation just like we always do here in Chattanooga. And you know Buddy said something like, you're late. And Luther said, well, I had to be on the noon news. I had work to do today. And no telling what kind of pranks are going on right there. Heaven's radio station has a new morning man. The ratings are awesome. It's sounding better than ever. No wonder, no wonder it's been so sunny and beautiful all week. And the stars at night, You've noticed that this week. You can't tell me. You can't tell me. You've noticed, and it's no coincidence. We've got a little extra star power. It's been beautiful. So again, I'd like to join them in thanking Mary and Jeff, Joni, Mike, Ian, Evan, the extended family. You, um, you were very kind to share him with us over the years. And Luther, I just want to say, old pal, thank you for being such a good role model for showing us how to live with kindness and grace and how to die with no regrets, no business that hasn't been taken care of. We are so thankful. You are the sunshine of our life, and we will always miss you. We'll always love our Luther.